We're here with Bob Streit from Ames, Iowa in Beijing, China at the International GMO Conference. Bob, can you tell us your, your title, your background, and what you spoke about at the conference? Okay, name is Bob Streit. I live just outside Ames, Iowa, near a small town called Boone also. I work as an independent ag consultant, uh, working mostly in the Midwest, but also get down to South America pretty regularly and then work a little bit off both coast, primarily corn and soybeans, but also getting into quite a few other grain and horticultural crops. So what uh, myself and some colleagues have been seeing and what my talk was about is the uh, maybe the plant health, the crop situation that we've been seeing the last few years in the Midwest. Uh, after different pesticides, primarily glyphosate, have been used on them. And what we've been seeing strongly since 2008 and 2009 is a major decline in plant health. And at first we were somewhat mystified what was happening. Now, in our work in South America on the USDA Rust Task Force, we got quite knowledgeable about uh, fungicides, how they were used, how they were formulated, and physiology to the plant. Okay, so rust is a is a type of fungus or something that happens to the crop? Yeah, it's a fungus okay. that is probably the most virulent I've ever seen. It showed up in South America in 2003 for the first time. And it went in and it probably killed completely 12 to 15 million acres of crop. That's a huge crop loss. Yeah, yeah. and it's bad enough that there are places where they will spray their uh, crops 13 times in one season to kill it. And that's a crop that's only in the ground maybe 99 to 110 days. And this is a crop that is sprayed 13 times with a pesticide that we ingest because it doesn't wash off, is that correct? Well, they usually dissipate, but the thing is the disease is that severe that uh, along with their weather conditions is just very conducive to its growth. Now, likewise, what we're seeing here and what the conference was about were the animal, plant, and human health ramifications mm -hmm. of maybe those residues being present in the food that we eat. Because uh, the problem as we recognize it is a lot of farmers raise their grain, they raise their crops, and they think you take it to the elevator and sell it, they get rid of it. Uh, people producing pork crops that take it to farmer's market have a greater connection with the consumers. Most farmers in the Midwest that raise grain really don't have that connection and they don't stop to think about what the health of their consumers is. So really why this is taking place in China is they really had a close society until about 15 or 20 years ago and then they started importing a lot of grain from different countries and what they're noticing is a huge and dramatic decline in human health. We just talked to the organizer of the conference and they said they've got roughly 100,000 people a year, young to middle aged, that just drop over dead. Oh. In schools, in the army, in business life and they're really asking why this is going on. We learned at the conference they've got roughly, roughly 350 million people being diagnosed per year with cancer over here. Again, they're asking why, and because uh, the Army still has a lot of power here and they're organized, quite a few of the people that were at the conference are actually among the generals in the Army. They're accepting their role in trying to protect the health of the, their inhabitants as a result maybe the people in the countries that are producing the food also that have similar problems, but yet either through their social structure or maybe inattention by the country's leaders or the fact that there's too much money involved, they don't want to maybe take corrective action. Now we have to point out that the Chinese have declared that their army and military are gonna be fed non-GMO food. So they are taking action. Yeah, huge yeah. action, which is very good. Yeah. But I'd say the uh, country's leaders, the business leaders, and I'd say the social leaders in the U.S., in South America, and Europe, I think have to recognize that China is doing this because uh, the Chinese market, and I'd say in part the Russian market, are also huge consumers. And, uh, too often in agriculture, we forget number one rule in business, and that is the customer is right. You have to meet his demands. Yeah. And if there is an alternative supplier, 
that will meet those demands, that's where the uh, business is going to go to. Yeah, and the, the fact is, is that we want our children healthy, we want our uh, citizens healthy, we want our military healthy, and we don't want all the sickness. And what you're seeing in the plants is that the plants are becoming more um, susceptible to fungus and, and illness and weakness as well. And you're seeing it correlate with human health, is that correct? Yeah, what I showed during my presentation, one of the things I, I like flying during the summer and friends' airplanes. I went up uh, several times per year during the 2009 through 2013 seasons. Took a camera with me, and anyhow, we shot pictures and just see the shining sea or horizon to horizon. We saw sick crops, and we think what was causing the problem was either a fungus mixed with a, a new entity or a bacteria mixed with a new entity that made the disease much more virulent, much mm. more aggressive. And anyone that consumed grain from those fields was infected with this problematic causal organism. It's alarming. So really, I guess when I've given uh, agricultural talks the last few years, I've said the one person that some of these large companies do not want to tick off and wake up are the mothers and the Chinese. Yeah. So here we are visiting with uh, the lady from San Diego <laughs> in Beijing. So those two things have happened. Moms across America yeah. in Beijing. We are waking some people up and with the help of uh, farmers and specialists and experts like yourself, courageously sharing your findings, sharing the truth and sharing the reality of what's happening, the impact of GMOs and glyphosate. Uh, we moms are incredibly empowered, and we really thank you for uh, your dedication. I know it's not easy, and the contribution that you're making to the world. We appreciate the opportunity to be here and discuss this. Thank you, Bob. Thank, thank you. you. Okay.